that the enemy comes immediately to steal the word. How does he do it? Through offense. That's his primary goal is offense. He'll use tribulation, he'll use persecution, he'll use all those things, lust of the flesh, desire for other things, all those things, but the end goal is offense. Because if he can get somebody offended, he'll shut down their ability to be Choose a life, keep a noble which way, keep your hope alive. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg and today once again we're going to have a look at Come Celebrate 2018. This has been a great year of promise. God has said that we can expect great beginnings and we've been saying 2018 no more waiting. It's a time to break forth into everything that God has given for us. And so we get together for the week around the Word of God. Got some great speakers for you to see. And so what I want to do is just give you some insight. We won't be able to show all of the program, all of the message, but in this short time, we're going to have a look at just some parts of the message. It's going to help build and strengthen your faith. Enjoy this. God gives us a track in life to guide us to our destiny. So why would I fight that? Why would I want to be something else? So let's be who God's called us to be. So when it comes to the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, there's protocol. Everybody say protocol. So why would I fight it if I want to see kingdom results? So let me just say this. When a teacher teach us something. You know Jesus warns that the enemy comes immediately to steal the word. How does he do it? Through offense. That's his primary goal is offense. He'll use tribulation, he'll use persecution, he'll use all those things, lust of the flesh, desire for other things, all those things, but the end goal is offense. Because if he can get somebody offended, he'll shut down their ability to hear. And so, I'm aware of that when I teach the Word of God. So if I can give you the heads up before, and it comes, you can go, oh, that's what Pastor Allen was talking about. And the devil's not going to get me. You think it's just a thought of yours, or something of the flesh? No, it's the enemy. You can silence me. Shut up. I'm listening. For me, my personal life, if an offense triggers in my life, that's an alarm bell for me. Whatever was just said, you see, sometimes I don't always agree with everything. Somebody says something, I don't agree. I can name five scriptures right now what, what you said was just wrong. But I don't get offended over it. If offense comes, there's a reason. That, that is a work of Satan. And he's trying to silence what you just said. I will buy that CD and go listen to why, why, why. What did he say that I missed that the offense clouded me not to be able to see? I'll get that CD and I'll listen to it over and over and over till I find out the exact word God was trying to get to me. Because the devil's afraid. He is petrified. If you ever find out it is written, man, you become unstoppable. So, with the message I'm about to speak, I have to teach you. I'm going to talk to you about the prophet's reward. Now, based on what I'm going to teach, there's a response from both sides. One of the primary offenses that I find the enemy uses is when you teach something, it sounds like you're trying to get something out of this. How many of you heard this? All they want is my money. Yeah. Anyone ever heard that? Not yeah. you. I mean, you heard it from somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So let me just help you right up front. As a teacher, I'm going to say a teacher, because there are some here that consider me your teacher. 
So I'm going to say your teacher, but to let those off the hook that might have a problem, let me say as a teacher, <laughs> if you think, if, if, you, if my motive is your problem, then just unhook from me right now. There's no obligation to follow me. Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. You don't have to follow anything. You do not have to my motive is not for me i'm teaching this as a teacher to the whole body of christ i mean you know, i walk under an apostolic anointing that means i'm called to the body i teach for the body so if you're concerned about my motive listen to everything write it down then say goodbye to me and go find somebody you can apply this to is that okay because I don't want anybody following that's not assigned to me. If, 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 if you're a toe, don't come to the hand. Go find your foot. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, so I have to just settle that because I, I'm, I'm going to go with this thing strong because this is something that has been neglected in the body of Christ. And we get a hold of it, the body will become unstoppable. How many you know when you, when you bang the toe, it's very difficult for any, even your fans feel it. Yeah. Everything is like, man, you can't do anything. That's all you're thinking about all the time. So we need to get the toe fixed. Right, amen. Get everything back in its right place. When, you, when you're fit and healthy, the body can do it. Go wherever it needs to go. You getting this? So this is repairing the body. Have a look at Matthew 28, 18. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Now, here's what Jesus was saying. Whatever I have taught you, you do. Now we already looked at it. We saw that he taught the most primary message was love. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and all your mind. And then love others the way I love you. On that basis, you'll fulfill all the commandments. So love doesn't set us free from the obligation of the commandment. It, it compels us to fulfill the commandments. Hallelujah. But I don't have to stress about what the commandments are on the worry that I might lose my salvation. Because by grace you're saved by faith, not a result of your works. So you don't impress God by being a good boy. But there's power in it. Oh, come on. You've got to get a hold of this. Amen. When I guide my children, don't do that. There's a reason behind it. I'm not trying to control them. There is a deeper person. And sometimes children don't always see it. Don't do that. They, they still do it behind their back. And then something happens, they come back. Now, you, you don't want to say, I told you so. <laughs> but that's what we're talking about here. There's, there's, there was a reason for it. So Jesus taught us a lot of things. And he says, when you do that, Take what I've taught you and teach others. Yeah. So first of all, a disciple is leading someone to Jesus. That you've got to lead them to Jesus before they can be a disciple. A disciple is not just a Jesus follower. It means student. Yeah. So we're always going to be learning. How many you consider yourself a disciple, a student? So we're always learning. Now, we're moving from just... Letting you know you've got a place in heaven. Because if you taught well enough, you should have that sorted out within a week or two. You are going to heaven. If you're not, get saved. You'll have an opportunity today. So get yourself into the kingdom of God. And let God do the work in you, save you, bring you in. And when you're part of the body of Christ, now we need to train you to be the most effective part where you've been placed. Effective in what you're called to be. Now, notice Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. 
When was that authority given? We know, according to Hebrews, that when he died and he paid the price, the Word of God, when Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's because he had died spiritually at that moment. Just the same way Adam lost the presence of God in the garden, he lost it because of sin. Jesus never committed any sin. He was made to be sin, but God cannot fellowship with sin. So the moment he was made to be sin, God had to break out of his life, and that breakaway of life is death. He died. He died before he switched his body off. Just the same way the first Adam died. But now he's paying the price for the first Adam, because he that was illegal. That's what that's what suckered the devil. When the word says that this thing, these things are hidden in the mystery, because had the prince of this world known, he would never have crucified Jesus. So he thought he got Jesus based on that he gave himself up, but he had never committed sin. So he was arrested illegally. Yeah. And he was executed illegally. Yeah. The devil didn't see that. Yeah. So when he died, he died paying for sin as a perfect human. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. We look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are not seen. Stop walking beneath your status. You are a royal family. You are a king. You carry his life inside of you because the greater one lives in you. He's waiting for the body to rise up and realize who you are. Speak something into existence that has not yet been manifested. And when you begin to release that word from out of your mouth, you will see your life go to a whole nother level. Satan, you give it back. Double everything. Somebody stand up and shout. Break forth. No more waiting. Break forth. No more waiting. It's payback time. Shout out double. 2018. No more waiting. Great beginnings. I break four. So now he goes and he pays the price. Now he's in hell. And I don't have time to speak on that. I taught a message what happened in the three days between the cross and the grave and between the grave and the cross and the resurrection from the grave. And yeah, let me just say this, yeah. You have to let Jesus, I don't know why people argue this fact, you have to let Jesus go to hell. Because if he didn't, you would have to. So. He was preeminent in all things. Isn't that what the word says? So he has to do something before anybody else does. So uh, if, if there's still a punishment that hasn't been paid for, then someone would have to still carry out that, this, that, 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 that sentence. No, he carried out the full sentence. The full sentence. And then God declares, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, and dispatches the Holy Spirit, enters into Jesus, and brings him right back up, and he's born from the dead. The Bible says he is the firstborn from the dead. Firstborn. Not just the born, the first. What does first imply? There's at least a second. And then a third, fourth, then 100, and then there's you. Firstborn amongst many brethren. Hallelujah. Now, at that point, God said, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And He gave Him the name. The name. He was already Jesus. I said He was already Jesus. So he's not giving Him Jesus. No, he's already Jesus. He gave him the name. What's the name? It's the name by which God was known. You, you can't really say it, but we say it as Jehovah. It's, it's four Hebrew letters, yad Hey vav Hey. That's that name, the name, the name. He is yad Hey vav Hey. Those four letters, the deliverer, the provider, the healer. Every time he spoke about what he did, he put that in front of him the Lord if you look in your King James or New King James particularly if you see the cap Lord capital L capital O capital R capital D 
That's the Yad Hei Vav Hei. So we say Jehovah, we put the vowels in there, but there were no vowels in that name. So that's why Jewish tradition, they won't even write G-O-D, they write G hyphen D, because that name was so holy, they were even afraid to say it. Just refer to him. That's the name. That's when, when you mention that name, that's when demons bow. So when you say Jesus, you're invoking yad hei vav you getting this? So, there he's given the authority. The authority of hell is stripped away. Authority of death is stripped away. Keys of life and death, everything. It's just, just Jesus rises. He's got everything. He's now been given the authority in heaven and earth. But family of God, what preempted that? What gave him authority to get to that place to be honored with that authority. Have a look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Verse 11. There's a prophet called John the Baptist. And he is Preparing the way for Jesus. Verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Yeah. Glory. Have you born again? You want to go beyond your salvation to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Amen. There's a lot of people gave their lives to Jesus, but they're not living in the Holy Spirit and fire. We want to experience the Holy Spirit and fire. Come on now. It's in the Holy Spirit and fire. Don't get me on that. I've got to stick with what I'm doing now. But there's people already drawing. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit every single day. It's not a once-off occurrence. It's not just when you're born again. When the Holy Spirit fell in the book of Acts, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and with power, and they went about doing good and healing all sick and oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with them. That's how Jesus was anointed, Acts 10, 38. But then you read on through Acts, and you'll see they were filled again, and then filled again. It's an ongoing lifestyle, not a once-off. Hallelujah. And then verse 12 his winnowing fan in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather in the wheat from the barns, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Verse 13, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by John. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Are you coming to me? Now that would make perfect sense. You know, we talk about Jesus here. But can you imagine Pastor Theo coming to me and saying, Ellen, would you please baptize me? <laughs> what? You are my spiritual father. Yes. Come on now. Yes. You, you, you know, it's like someone superior asking you to do something that you should be doing for me. I want you to baptize me. If anyone needs baptizing, yeah, it was me. When I first got saved, I was the one that needed to be baptized. Isn't that right? So, John has been proclaiming. He said, I, I, I'm not even fit enough to tie the man's shoelace. This is, this is an awesome man. And he's going to come and change the world. So he's preparing. He spent his preaching all around Jesus. And now... Jesus arrives, he's on the scene, and Jesus' first request is, John, I want you to baptize me. John said, whoa, I know who you are. If anyone needs baptizing, it's me. The lesser is baptized by the greater. This is what he's saying. Now listen to this, verse 15. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permitted to be so now, for thus is fitting 
for us to fulfill all righteousness. Righteousness. The right way of doing things. You want to say protocol. For us to be right, we're going to have to keep protocol. And for us to be protocol, you have to baptize me. And evidently what he said settled John. Because if you have a look in verse 16, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased now without faith it is impossible to please God so obviously Jesus had learned something about protocol remember when he was born he was born as a baby he didn't know anything just as any other baby doesn't know and had to learn the Bible says he grew in wisdom and stature as the human he had to find out from the word who he was and then live it Many people believe that God controls the flow of money into your life and into my life. It's not true. true. God doesn't give the wealth. Well, well, He's created, created wealth, wealth, but He gives you power, power to, get it. to get it. It's us, it's us, it's us. Bang, bang, word, word, word. Applying, applying the principle, the principle that, that releases the flow. Releases, releases. Join Alan Bagg and Didier Desson for the Faith and Finance Conference, taking place from the 30th of July till the 1st of August. When you find out your passion and your purpose and the gifting that God has given you, is to put you in a position where you are experiencing an unlimited supply. Your well is in the center of God's will. Join Alan Bagg and Didier Desson for the Faith and Finance Conference at the Bank Christian Family Church from the 30th of July till the 1st of August. Don't miss out, register online and secure your seat to be part of this dynamic impartation from two leaders who will help you understand Kingdom Finance. 2018, glory, glory, no glory. more waiting! We're so excited for Come Celebrate! Woo! Yes! Welcome Celebrators here, yeah, family. Amen, and we are so expectant make a decision this week i'm going to be good soil god's got you this week amen he has so much in store for you we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are not seen stop walking beneath your status you are a royal family you are a king you carry his life inside of you because the greater one lives in you he's waiting for the body to rise up and realize who you are speak something into existence that has not yet been manifested and when you begin to release that word from out of your mouth you will see your life go to a whole nother level satan you give it back double everything somebody stand up and shout break forth no more waiting break forth no more waiting it's payback time Shout out double. double. 2018. No more waiting. Great beginnings. I break four. You know, I, I've, I said it again and again and again. This program is just too short to be able to show you everything. And yet we had such a download. Think about it. From Monday to Friday, every day, we had morning and evening sessions. Monday night, Tuesday to Friday, mornings and evenings. A lot of word was imparted. And so we're giving you some insight to it here on the program. But I want you to get the fullness of the messages. So get a hold of your set today. You can get on CD, even on MP3. You know how this works. It's on a USB stick. You stick it in your computer and get it onto your phone, into your car so that you can listen to it again and again and again. These promises are for all of us as the body of Christ. And I want you to break forth into your great beginning. This is the year of 2018. No more waiting. And so get your set today. It's going to help build and encourage your faith. Now, friend, if you've not yet given your life to Jesus, I want you to know He loves you. He died for you gave His life for you, and then rose from the dead, proving that your sins are forgiven. Today, all you have to do is believe that. The Bible says, believe that with your heart, confess it with your mouth, and you will be saved. And so I want to lead you in that prayer right now. 
Let's pray together. Yes, today, while you're watching, say this out loud with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life for me. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe you are my Lord. You are my Savior. From this day on, I live for you, to serve you, to worship you. One day I will leave this earth and I'll stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, praise God. If that's the first time you prayed that prayer, I have a gift for you here today. It is something that's going to help build and develop your faith. It explains to you what happened, some guidelines now that you are a Christian, a way to read your Bible from cover to cover just by doing a little portion of reading every single day. In one year, you'll get through your entire Bible. Isn't that awesome? And then this wonderful, encouraging CD. That's a free gift I want to sow into your life. If you write to me at the address over there or call us on that phone number, as soon as we got your details, we'll send that to you and we'll be with you in a few days' time. Well, we look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. With the help of technology and God's powerful grace at work, you can now fellowship with family at the Bay Christian Family Church at our many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to connect, join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format, so purchase yours online at